Hey, what's up guys? My name is Achano and welcome to episode 118 of Game Programming. So today we're going to be talking about uh, UI buttons, okay? So last time I believe we did some progress bars here and our health could drop and whatnot. And um, one more thing, we're, we're, we're kind of going to continue on with our UI elements and whatnot and designing our user interface so that it can be awesome. Um, so one thing that we're missing that's really important is buttons, okay? And probably other kind of uh, other kinds of UI images as well. Like if we want to display an icon, for example, that just indicates something, that would be nice, okay? But basically, in terms of buttons, we want to be able to specify pretty much any button um, kind of configuration. So we just want an area really that we can kind of click on, okay? That has certain events as well. So, uh, let's talk about how we're going to design that and put it into practice. So this is like one of those situations where like C sharp events would be like amazing, but we're going to have to make do with Java interfaces basically and see if we can make something that is kind of uh, nice and clean. So to get started with this, what we're going to want to do is probably head over to our UI and take, take a look at how that's done because I don't remember, frankly, that's the reason. So. If we go into some of this stuff, so progress bar is a good example. So we send a UI component and we have a bunch of stuff. Yeah, okay, that's fine. Okay, so let's just make a new class called UI button. Uh, it's going to extend UI components. Yes, I do want the word extends there. UI components. We're going to do whatever it tells us to do, such as add a constructor, good. That's a good way to start with a position. And we also want some kind of event handler, okay? So to make this very simple, we want a private UI button event, or UI button listener, we'll call it, right? That's kind of like what Java's convention is, I think. They're just, they've got like key listener and whatnot. So we'll just have a UI button listener and we'll call this, um, button listener. Okay. Now let's make it so that we have to, um, in fact, before we move on to that stuff, I'll just quickly create an interface that is called that. We'll leave it empty for now. I do want to get some kind of graphics displaying first. So if we go to US, uh, UI progress bar, we can probably like, so foreground color is something we do need. We can probably copy a lot of this stuff. I'll just, in fact, I'll just drag it over here and we'll see what we can do. So, uh, that's UI components. Okay, so set foreground color, get progress, so we'll, we'll grab that. Render, we'll definitely grab that. There's no update. We do want update though. So why is there no update? I would have thought you can burn. Okay, there is an update. Good. It's just not in progress bar. Okay, that's fine. The reason we want update for all components, not just, um, not just things like buttons and things that actually actively need attention, every frame uh, is for things like animations, right? What if we want the progress bar to kind of pulsate or show like some kind of glint or something, right? We want to be able to update that animation. So we need to make sure that it's an updatable object basically. So that's the idea. Okay, so we also need a size. So not all UI components require a size, which I think is a bit weird. What do we, I mean, like labels and stuff, yeah. I do think size is something that everything should require though. It doesn't need to be implemented, but it should exist. So I'm just going to uh, make sure that we do have size over here. Um, so that's going to give that. And then of course progress we don't need. So let's go ahead and um, set up something like a label, I guess. You could probably structure this in such a way that a, um, so that a um, a button just is simply like a panel that contains a label. Um, that is possible, but we're probably not gonna do it that way. Um, I think we'll do it our own way. So let's quickly check out label. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so what do we have for label? We've got, yeah. Yeah. It might actually be a better idea to just use a label. I'm gonna use a label because, um, yeah, because it's a better idea. We'll make it public. We'll make a public void set text as well, which just sets the button text. So label dot set text. Apparently that's not a thing. Label text equals text. 
just to make it easier so that we don't have to go button.label.text equals whatever whatever we want it to be. Uh, update is going to be where we update our uh, button listener and whatnot. Or not where we, up, where we update that, but where we um, uh, process that, I want to say. Um, and yeah, so for foreground color, we don't really need that because I'm just going to call label.renderg if label doesn't equal null. Because we can certainly have null labels. I mean, what if the button's just an image or something? Um, okay, cool. So, let's see here. Um, foreground color... We don't need that anymore since we're just using the label. And let's see. So we don't need that. And we got our text. Okay, that's looking pretty good to me. So what I might do is um, go into something like player, which is where the rest of our stuff is, and see if I can make a button. So private UI button button. I don't know what this button will be yet. Okay, how does this work again? So button equals new button, right? New UI button. Uh, we'll pop it. Okay, so the health bar. We'll pop it under the health bar. That probably makes the most sense. So we'll say like 10, maybe, I don't know, 260. Maybe that's, hopefully that's good enough. Uh, size, we don't need to specify. We probably should though, right? We do, yeah, we, we'll make it so that we have to specify a size because... That makes sense. Um, and we'll transmit size here as well. Go back into super or not. And add in um, one that takes in size as well. <clears throat> okay. So this dot size equals size. And back in player, we'll just uh, add the size. So I don't really know what we're going for here. So let's just say maybe like, this is in pixels, but it's like divided by three. So maybe we'll say like, oh, isn't it? It might not be actually. Yeah, it's not, is it? So we'll say like 120 by 40 or something. Um, and we've got our button, which is, oof, the UI button, oh, extra T, whoops. Okay, so, then we'll just simply say component button, and I think we're good to go. Button. Button. Okay, we've got a button, brilliant. So, we should be able to click on it, right? Now, the reason I added events and stuff, or rather, <laughs> I added that thing, let's just kind of... Reduce this button, make it a bit smaller. Okay, now it's a pretty cool button. Um, actually, one more thing we do, we should do, is let's just set the text of it to something like "hello." I think that'll be that might be actually be white, and it just crashed as well, which is fun. Labels null. Okay, so uh, that's bad. Um, if label, oh, how are we going to do this? This is where active comes in, actually. So every UI component should have a protected boolean active. I'll make it public. So active, whether or not something is active. So by default, it's going to be true. So all that happens is um, that the, the reason that's much better is because we can have stuff that exists but doesn't actually do anything. Why did I comment that out? I don't mean to do that. Okay, what do we need to label? We need a vector and a string. So vector will be something like, um, vector will probably be like position.add like maybe four, five, I'm not sure. String will just be blank. So instead of us having to be like, let's delete label and let's recreate label and we'll have to constantly basically create objects and whatnot, instead of doing all that, because that would be bad and inefficient, we can just say, um, for example, over here, if uh, text is nothing, right, then we'll just simply grab our label, set active to false, and return. Or in fact, instead of that, we could just do else like that. Okay. 
So that's the plan. And then by default, I guess it'll be false if we use this constructor and don't specify um, anything. So that'll be the plan. Um, update, yeah, this is where everything will happen. But if we run through this, okay, so that just failed. Um, that's a bit weird because, oh, I see. Okay, so position, no, that's actually very weird. Um, that's very weird. Why is that the case? When we made our bomb, we set the position, this little position. I'm guessing it uses the offset, right? Yes, so label, so offset. Huh. So, where does it get the offset from? The, I guess it gets it from the panel. So we add it to the panel. Not this panel. We add it to the panel. Um, and then in, up, well, in the update method, it sets the offset of each component that it owns to a certain amount. But I guess that doesn't happen for our label since this owns it and not the other thing. Oof, this is interesting. This is interesting. Um, yeah, that's a bit annoying. I don't know how we're going to fix that easily. Um, yeah, we'll think about that. We'll think about that. So let's, uh, yeah, that's a bit annoying. Okay, let's kind of change something real quick. Let's come into here and, so your component has been a panel. Okay, so we'll add a panel. And how do we, in our panel, not this panel, in our panel, how do we add things? So add components. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll kind of do the same thing we did with entities where we call the init method. So the panels, the things aware of what's going on. Um, the reason we're doing this, you'll find out in a minute, but components are in it, this. Okay, so let's just, um, I meant that. Let's create the method. Here it is. Let's drag that up to be over here, and then we'll just say UI panel dot, oh, whoops, I mean this dot panel equals panel. Okay, so now we're aware of the panel. The reason this is good is because now instead of adding this label to here, which we'll still keep actually, we'll make the label, we'll set it to false, and then we'll add it to the panel. Okay, and now we get the offset and whatnot working. And then we can still control it here because it's still got the reference. So that should work. Maybe, maybe not. Panel's null, eh? Well then, that's a bit weird. Um, where's our panel? Oh, I know why. Okay, uh, we need to do that at init then. Uh, was it public or what was it? It's public, yeah. Public void init. I'm actually just going to make it um, default because I don't want it anywhere outside this package. Um, so we'll grab init, we'll override it. We'll call the super init, obviously. And then we'll simply say, um, uh, what was it, panel dot add component label. Brilliant, so there you go. Uh, I forgot the fact that it's wrong again. Um, and also it's now a different color, which is also brilliant. So we didn't set a color, so let's set a color. Um, I guess the default color will probably be for button. I mean, I guess I'll just make it kind of gray, maybe like light gray. Um, and Oh, okay. I didn't realize it was that kind of color. Serious business. Okay, so the text is still pink. Um, we'll guess we'll just set. Oh, it's because of the font, eh? Oof, what's the default font? So the default font is Helvetica. It's going to be that color. Okay, so that's just the color. I see. So we should just be able to set the color then. Label dot 
color equals um, new, uh, can we just run set color I think that's a thing right yep okay uh, we'll set it to something like if this is the case then I guess we'll set it to something maybe a bit darker whoops that was what just happened come back here okay so we'll set this to something a bit darker um, maybe something like um, I don't know like uh, five, six, 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 I guess. That's about, yeah, okay. Um, and we'll obviously have to lower it a lot. So by adding five, okay, so it, mm, I see, okay. So we need to do some things with the position here. So vector, what is it, 2i label position LP. So we'll copy that first. I probably won't copy it unless I do this though. Um, and then we'll say LP dot X equals, let's see, um, we kind of want to probably just add four to this, uh, but to Y we want to subtract or which way is up again? I don't even know, man. We probably want to add about the size of the button. No, oh, I don't even know. We'll have to figure out some like font metrics and whatnot to actually size the button probably based on the label probably in the future. But for now, we'll just say if you specify your own size, then it's going to be um, basically plus equals size y. And we'll see just what that looks like. And then we'll obviously add LP here. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, so that's pretty good. We'll maybe add a bit of padding. So... Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Let's make this darker though. All right, cool. So there we go. We've got a bit of a button going on. Uh, it doesn't do anything yet, but it renders and it looks pretty good. So that's going to wrap up this episode of Game Programming. If you guys enjoyed, please hit the like button. I'm going to put out a video every day this week, so you should be able to uh, enjoy um, much more game programming. So yeah, if you guys enjoyed, um, hit the like button. I think I've already said that, so I'll just end the video here. Goodbye.